Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Only Choose One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work Q. Well, Composer X is Robert Schumann, and choosing Work Q has been something of a conundrum because Schumann wrote really a huge range of music in a wide variety of media, but he was rather uneven in his output, as I think everybody would agree. He was nonetheless a wonderful genius, and a lot of you had suggestions for what work Q ought to be. And I've really given it some serious thought, and I wanted to do something that would present the god Cancrazans with the most ineluctably ideal selection that I could possibly come up with. Uh, recently, this was complicated by the fact that I have been perusing, getting through this thing, mm, the complete works for piano, performed by the young, youngish, younger, I don't know, German pianist, Florian Ulig, who's a very, very talented pianist and has done marvelous stuff. And you know, it says something about the classical music culture that Kankerzans wants to destroy utterly, um, down to the last dreg, and who can blame him, that a magnificent project, which is on the Hensler label, um, can be concluded and finished and issued without anybody taking much notice of it. You know, I mean, it used to be that in the day, if somebody was going to do the complete Schumann piano music, first of all, it would have been deemed virtually impossible because even the former complete Schumann piano music cycles are not as complete as this. This has, let's see, uh, 16 volumes containing something like, I don't know, 18 or 20 CDs. Some of them are two CD sets and an additional volume containing all the works for piano and orchestra. Quite nicely done. And you don't just get the, the canonical complete works. You get sketches, second drafts, additional things, first editions, you know. I mean, this is uber, uber complete. I mean, it's really super duper complete. And it's organized in, in quite a nice way by, by topic. Schumann and the Sonata and characteristic pieces, Schumann in Vienna, Schumann and his daughters, you know, the album for, the, for youth and the more characteristic pieces, Variations, which is a two CD set. Really, you know, it's an extraordinary Schumann and E.T.A. Hoffman. You know, you get Chrysleriana and all those goodies. It really, really quite, quite a wonderfully, thoughtfully put together collection. And, and I don't know, does anyone mention it? But boy, there are gems in here because Schumann was, was so much greater um, even than his admirers often, often are willing to admit. And when it comes to choosing one work, um, it, it, it is difficult. I mean, it is complicated. And your selections ran from songs to chamber works to the piano concerto, you know. But you know what really kind of surprised me is that very few of you in making suggestions for the best of Schumann turned to the solo piano works. And I mean, come on, folks. He was a piano guy, first and foremost. That's what he was. And here is the proof of it. I'm sorry that Florian is upside down here, but if I turn it right side up, all oh, this stuff's going to fall out of the box, and then we're going to have a horrible mess. You know, I don't want a horrible mess. So, you know, it, it really is extraordinary. So there is this fabulous edition of all the piano works, which I've been, you know, slowly working my way through. It's come out over the years, some individual things. Jed reviewed some of it on classicstoday.com. So after listening to tons and tons of Schumann, um, I have finally decided that the piece we need to select and present to Cankerzans to prevent the classical music apocalypse is the Fantasy in C, Opus 17. I think it's Opus 17. You know, it's, it's here. It's here somewhere. I was looking around. Wait a minute. I've got it right here. Yes. The Fantasy in C Major, Opus 17. There you go. Um, and the reasons are manifold. First of all, uh, Schumann is known principally as an epigrammatic artist, one who speaks in, in wonderful, self-contained, 
little musical phrases that are not really susceptible to much development. That was always his problem with working in larger forms. You know, things like his non-developing development sections, like in the Rhenish Symphony, things like that. And it's it would be a defect if he wasn't such a genius in so many other areas. But as is usual with these things, you know, nobody has to be perfect in everything. You just have to be perfect in a bunch of things. And he was perfect in a bunch of things. But but beyond that, he could write and often did write very satisfying pieces in larger forms. And I wanted to do something like that. It's one of those pieces that is is one of his original works in larger forms because the romantic generation generally was always at its best when it was not having to deal with, you know, traditional structures and things like that, um, that people would be annoyed with if they didn't do what they were supposed to do. I mean, if romanticism means anything, it's the triumph of irrationality, the freedom to dream, the ability to seem as though you're improvising, but really not. You're really creating a satisfying musical structure because, you know, one of the things about music is that if the if the structure isn't satisfying in and of itself, whether it follows a traditional form or not, then the piece is going to just be a boring piece of crap. <laughs> I mean, that's that's just the way it goes. And the fantasy has a fascinating, completely self-evolved structure. It begins with a, a whirling, passionate, turbulent, mysterious, you know, you know, Schumann marks it. What does he say? Call it. Thing. It's it's passionately and 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 at one point he marks it in legendary tone and throughout Durchaus fantastisch. You know, fantastical. And it, oh, it is. It absolutely is. And it has a very nice shape. You know, there's themes that recur and all that. It's quite beautiful. And it comes to a mysterious and quiet conclusion. Then you've got a march, a central march thing, which is big and bold and gutsy and 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 quite virtuosic and it's it's just a, a real sort of one two punch kind of thing and then a finale which is just dreamy and inward and reflective and and you know it, you would think it would be anticlimactic but it isn't because the emotion the expression is just so so special and atmospheric and different from everything that's come before. It's an absolutely fabulous masterpiece. And it lasts nearly half an hour. It's a big work that completely fulfills all of the the, the range of expression and intensity and, and contrast that big works need to do while still somehow hanging together. And, and that's why I think we need to go there. I think we need to select this and present it to Cancrazans and say, hey, you know, that is just one bit of, of, of this. And there are amazing surprises in here. I mean, Schumann was a genius contrapuntist. His studies for, for pedal piano are marvelous. The Songs of Dawn are gorgeous. Nobody plays them. I mean, there's so much stuff to discover that really deserves to survive so that we can discover it. And I think the fantasy, even more than Carnival or Papillons or, you know, the David's Bundler Tenza or anything like that, really gives us a sense of Schumann's vision as a visionary, as a, as a composer of, of, of amazing, amazing sort of expressive range. And uh, that's, that's, that's the deal. So, and it's got to be a piano piece, folks. I mean, don't just, just don't even go there with the other stuff. I know some of it's wonderful. Some of it really is wonderful. But when you look at his achievement as a whole, when you look at the box, I'll put him sideways here. It's, it's, I mean, there's nothing else in his output that compares to this. And from this, um, I think the fantasy really is the iconic representar not only of Schumann as a composer, but also of, you know, early Romanticism um, and, and fabulous keyboard virtuoso technique. I mean, remember, the fantasy was dedicated to Liszt and it, it does everything. It does everything that you want it to do. And, and it makes you want to explore the rest. And I think that Ken Krasanz, when he hears that, will definitely want to explore the rest. 
or at least want to leave, leave it to us to explore the rest. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.